So GA4 is missing key reports every e-commerce store needs and that's costing you sales because you can't optimize what you can't measure. I put my eight years as a web analytics specialist into good use and created five different templates to fill the gaps that GA4 left us. And in this video, I'll take you through each of them and show you how to use them to get the maximum insights. Hello data people, I'm Robert from Clicks No Lie and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. Let's start with something that is completely missing from GA4 and it's crucial to know so that you can increase your average order value. And hey, don't worry, you can download all of these cheat sheets and templates I'll mention in this video. Uh, the link is, in, is the first link in the video description. Now, unfortunately in GA4, you cannot see what products are bought together. So for example, if somebody buys an uh, Apple iPhone, uh, what other products they usually buy with it. Let's say that's the earbuds or maybe some sort of a case. And why would you want to know this? Well, obviously it helps you to upsell or uh, cross sell products when you know what are bought together, usually by other customers. So we don't have this information, but I have an easy way for you to do this. So what you need to do is you go in your GA4 and then you go here in Explore and we need to create a blank exploration report Make sure it's in the free form and I'm going to just select the right dates for this specific case. And now we need to add dimensions. Let's add dimensions. We need event, then transaction ID, and we need item name. Let's import those. And then we need to add a metric. So we're going to add here sessions. I'm just going to add metric here. I'm going to double click on this and it's going to add it in the right place. And then I need to also add transaction ID and then the item name and make sure they're in this order. It'll make it easier later on. Right now it doesn't show anything interesting because we need to scroll down here and in filters, we're going to add a filter for event name and in here exactly matches and then purchase. So we're just going to look at the purchase event. That way we have better data. There you go. Now we have transaction IDs here and an item name. So this looks much better. Now we are just going to export this data and we're going to use ChatGPT to actually analyze this for us. Now, if you don't want to use ChatGPT or you have privacy concerns with it, then just grab my Google Sheets template where you can either do the calculations directly in the sheet or anonymize your data for ChatGPT. So you can still use AI for that. Download this template by clicking on the first link in the video description. So let's go back here. And if you have the rights, you can now export this data. So here at the top, you have a download button. If you click on it, you can export it as a CSV or you can just uh, export it directly into Google Sheets. Up to you which one you prefer. But once you download it, it looks something like this. We need to modify this file a little bit. So let's remove these rows and this one also. We don't need it. And also sessions, we actually don't need this information. So I'm just going to delete it. So all we have now is trans transaction ID and item name. And now let's click on file and export this as CSV like that. So this is the name. I've already done a few tests here. So let's go to ChatGPT and you need to make sure you have the ChatGPT 4.0 because then you can also upload the, the file here. So I'm going to do that, upload it. And that's the file I just exported. And now I prepared a prompt for us already here. And I'm going to just say instead of 10 top 10, I'm going to say top three. And then I'm going to just execute this one. If you want to grab this prompt and many other ones that I already prepared, you can just also download the file that I mentioned earlier. And that way you can just copy paste the stuff. Okay, there you go. We have now here Google Ombre Lime Pen and Google Ombre Purple Pen are bought together. And these other two products are bought together. Now, this data set is just not very interesting. If you don't have more data, you're just going to get better results. Uh, and I've tested it with a big 20,000 row data and it works really well. Now, if you have any doubts, if this is correct and you want to just double check that you're not, you know, it's not hallucinating or anything like that, you can download my spreadsheet. So in this file, you're able to just paste your data here. This is the raw data that we just exported from Google Analytics 4 and then You'll be able to come here in AI Checker 
and you would come here and place the item names here so in our case it would be these two I would just grab it here and place it like this and then the other one as well in this one and that way I can double check if they are actually correct because this calculation is di happening directly in the sheets okay that was pretty cool right we got a real use case for AI okay for the next report we won't need AI but we need Google Looker Studio which is the free dashboarding tool that Google uh, provides and the best part it connects directly with GA4 now imagine you want to know what time and what time of day your website is the busiest you, you can get that data in GA4 but it's really unreadable it will take you a long time to just figure out what's going on there wouldn't it be nice that you'll be able to see a heat map like this one well that's exactly what you can do in Google Looker Studio let me show you how and I've created this template for you all you have to do is go and click on the first link in the video description once you downloaded this when you land on this page you can come here and click on these three dots make a copy and once you've made the copy make sure you are in the edit mode and then just come here and click on add data and then you have Google Analytics then select the account and also select the property and then click on add I already have this one so I'm not gonna do it again and once you have that done I just want to show you how this is set up so first of all you can obviously change the dates to see the data that you need and if you click on this table this is actually a pivot table with heat map and just double check that you have the right data source you have the drop down right here and the way it's set up is simple here we have row dimensions hour and then we have column dimension date once you've set up everything once you've changed the dates then you can always go back to view and now you can start analyzing okay for this web shop for example it looks like most people come uh, between 10 and 11 although on Wednesday it looks like that's when uh, the bulk of the uh, people are arrived this could also be because they had some big campaign on Wednesday uh, and it just was a big email campaign and a lot of people came so it skews the data a little bit so that's why it's good to look at a longer time period so that you can get this right but in general I would say between so weekdays between somewhere like 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. that's the most people arrive there um, that it's very clear here when you use the heat map now when you're starting out or you already used it for a while I think GA4 is just so overwhelming with different metrics what should you use as your KPI as your main goal well that's something I see a lot of my customers struggle that's why I created a simple guide for people in e-commerce to have a starting point for KPIs and and these KPIs are based on different roles in e-commerce so I prepared this page for you where you have the KPIs per e-commerce role uh, you can either just look at this page or click on the download PDF and for example here we have e-commerce manager If I click on it here we have the KPIs that uh, I would see the most important uh, for e-commerce manager it's a bit more high level KPIs like customer lifetime value and uh, year, on, year on year revenue growth so obviously this will depend on the role however I also added the explanation what it means and the calculation how you can get to this number and I created this so you have a starting point and from here you can take on and maybe add some other KPIs that you see that are fit for your role however uh, you can check out all of them here the next one is the most essential addition to your reports and it's knowing your customer retention rate and customer lifetime value G4 tries to do this but it's completely useless because it's highly unreliable so let me show you the solution okay when you land on the sheet it's a little overwhelming however everything here will make sense I also have instructions here in the tab instructions tab uh, you have your video explaining everything you also you have few steps that you need to take so that you can add your own data to this but once you do add your data you'll be able to see quite a lot of valuable uh, information so for example we have the high level numbers like uh, average lifespan per customer and customer lifetime value extremely important uh, when you're looking at the longer time periods are people coming back to your store are they uh, repeat purchases and here is a bit more information but where it gets really interesting is with the cohorts cohort just means a group and these are grouped by the date they bought first so for example if you bought it in January then you're in this first group if you bought it in September then you're in this one now I'm not going to go into detail how to read the cohorts just check out the video in the instructions tab I'll explain everything there however 
uh, you'll be able to see things like orders by cohort, customer retention by co cohort. We have also here revenue by cohort, uh, customer lifetime revenue by cohort, and most importantly, customer lifetime profit by cohort. Because with this number, you'll be able to see immediately at what point your customer becomes profitable. If they buy every month, for example, that just means that you can spend a bit more on, on the advertising because you know you're gonna make that, um, you know, make that cost up later on. Just go ahead and download this. Hundreds of people have already downloaded it and I've only heard good feedback about this one. The next one is something that GA4 could have added easily, but no. That's the things like purchase conversion rate, product to basket rate, and a few more e-commerce specific metrics. These metrics are essential for you to compare your data to each other easily. Luckily, we can add these to GA4 by using calculated metrics. Okay, let's say you, you, you know, you're looking at data here in GA4 and you wanna know a bit more about organic search. So we have this many sessions and you, let's say you have X amount of transactions. That's something you can see easily in GA4. However, what if you wanna know how many out of these people actually bought something? So those, uh, that's the conversion rate, purchase conversion rate. Well, in this shop, they already have something set up and you see this number here, basically under 1% of people that come from organic search actually buy something. However, G4 doesn't come with this number by default. So the conversion rate is not there. So you'll have to add it. Luckily, it's not too hard. So if you go to uh, here in admin, and then you go to the data display and custom definitions, you have a tab here, calculated metrics. Let me show you how to how it works but you could just create a calculated metric from here. But basically, if I edit this one, you add a name to the calculated metric and then you add a formula. Uh, formulas are easy. You just start typing here, for example, transactions, it will give you and it will add it there. So formula for purchase conversion rate is just e-commerce purchases divided by sessions. And once that's ready, you just save it. So once you've saved the calculated metric, then you just come to your report and then you click on this pen icon and you're able to add more metrics to it and dimensions. So for example, in this case, if I come here, add metric, uh, purchase, you see purchase conversion rate, I'm able to add it. This might take an hour or maybe even 24 hours, but what's cool, if once you add this, you can actually see historic data, so you don't need to collect data to see this uh, you know, number, but actually you'll just calculate it for uh, all the history you have already. And don't forget to apply this and save this so that it gets added to the report itself. However, these are not all the calculated metrics you should set up uh, as an e-commerce store. There are a few other ones. I've uh, collected them here. For example, add to cart rate, PDP to purchase rate. All, the, all of the formulas are here, so you don't need to try to uh, write them down. Uh, just grab this, uh, this uh, cheat sheet and you can copy and paste stuff that you need but extremely important to add because this just adds a bit more details to your, uh, to your reports. Most of these will just make it much easier to compare uh, information to each other. So for example, uh, the example we have here is the channel. So which one is actually performing better? It's kind of hard to say without looking at the conversion rate. Here it's really clear that, okay, organic search is not performing, uh, but page search is pretty much one of the best ones besides referral. So that's something you could now put in uh, more effort in. And there's also email here, obviously, that, that's the best performing. So you can, this way you can prioritize certain things and uh, it makes comparing data much easier. Now you have new tools for GA4, but just looking at data without knowing how to turn it into insights will waste your time. That's why you should watch this video here where I'll teach you my six step system to turn data into insights.